Hello there. This lecture is all about two-factor analysis of variance, or a factorial ANOVA. So in the last lecture, you learned about a single factor, or a one-way ANOVA. This is taking that a step further and doing two factors, or two independent variables, instead of just one independent variable like you learned about with the single factor, or one-way ANOVA. So this lecture will basically be pretty brief and basic. Um, I'm not going to have you guys do any um, specific hypothesis testing with steps 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the factorial ANOVA. The calculations are pretty intense. Um, my goal is just for you to walk away from this lecture understanding the general purpose of a factorial ANOVA, what the data looks like for a factorial ANOVA, how to um, understand and interpret hypotheses for main effects, so the effect of one independent variable at a time on the dependent variable, and then how to understand and interpret hypotheses for interaction effects. So when both independent variables interact to predict or have an impact on the dependent variable. Then I'll go through several examples of what main and interaction effects look like. And then of course you can try those example problems and watch the example problems video to test your understanding of these concepts. So the purpose of a factorial ANOVA is to simultaneously examine the influence of two independent variables on a dependent variable. So with the one-way ANOVA, you could have multiple levels of one independent variable and test differences between all those different groups representing those different levels of the independent variable. With a factorial ANOVA, you can have two different independent variables with however many levels that you want. Now just to keep things simple, I'm going in this lecture to stick to situations where we only have two levels of each independent variable. Again, this type of analysis of variance can get very, very complex. You can even have a repeated measures factorial ANOVA where one of your independent variables is time and then the other independent variable is something that was manipulated. But we're not going to get into too many complex designs. We're just going to stick to a basic two by two factorial ANOVA design. So here are some examples of some research questions or hypotheses that you could ask testing with a factorial ANOVA. So the first one, does the influence of heavy metal music on driving speed depend on being a fan of heavy metal? So I want you to pause for a minute and think about, in this example, what are your independent and dependent variables? So go ahead and pause the video and think about that before I tell you. Okay, so hopefully you try that on your own, but if you think about this first example, the two independent variables is listening to heavy metal music, right? So the type of music being listened to, and being a fan of heavy metal music. Those are both your independent variables, and then you want to see if those two things interact to have an influence on driving speed. So the next example, does the pain relieving effect of morphine versus fentanyl depend on the nature of the pain? So now I want you to pause and think about what's your independent variables in this example and what's your dependent variable. All right, so in this example, drug is an independent variable, two different levels, morphine versus fentanyl, and the nature of pain would be the other independent variable. So in the example that I'm gonna provide in the example problems, the nature of pain would be acute versus chronic. And then we're thinking that the nature of the pain and the type of drug is going to interact to predict the pain relief of those drugs. Then the third example, does the effectiveness of penalties for traffic violations depend on income? So in this one, you've got two different independent variables because, again, this is the factorial no ANOVA lecture after all. So we've got income and we've got the penalty. And how do those two things interact to predict the effectiveness of those penalties for minimizing traffic violations? So if we look at kind of what the data looks like when it's set up for a factorial ANOVA, again, we're going to have a two by two design. I'm not going to go beyond that in this class just because it gets a little bit complex. But if we want to look at that first research question, so does heavy metal music make fans of heavy metal drive faster than non-fans? So the way that you would set this up is you would have fans and non-fans. And among those fans, half, about half of those fans would be randomly assigned to the heavy metal condition, where they'd be in their car and they'd be driving and they'd be listening to heavy metal music on the highway and you'd record their mean speed. Then the other half of those heavy metal fans would be assigned to the no music condition, where they're driving down the same exact highway in the same exact model of car, right? You want to control for everything other than what you're manipulating, but they're not listening to music. Then over here, you would have the non-heavy metal fans. Boo, I don't like it. So those non-heavy metal fans 
half of them would get into the heavy metal condition where they're driving down the highway in the same car as everybody else and they're listening to heavy metal music, then the other half of non-fans would be in a condition where they listen to no music. And again, in all of those conditions, we would be recording the dependent variable in the same exact way. So we're looking at the mean speed for each of these different groups. So in this example, we've got two different levels of the music condition independent variable, two different levels of the fan independent variable, and then our dependent variable is measuring the mean speed for each of those groups so that we can compare. So the way that you state hypotheses for a factorial ANOVA, you're actually going to have three nulls and three alternatives. And I'm not going to have you write these out in symbols. You can literally just put, as you see here, so again, each main effect is the effect of one independent variable at a time. Then when you get to the interaction effect, that's when you start to talk about how, in this case, being a fan and what music you listen to interact to have an impact on driving speed. So if we just look at the main effect for the heavy metal music or the music type, right? That's just one independent variable at a time. So just looking at music, the null would be that there's no main effect of heavy metal music on driving speed. And of course, the alternative is that there is a main effect of heavy metal music on driving speed. Now, if you look at the main effect for our other independent variable, being a fan of heavy metal music, you see the null, there's no main effect for being a fan of heavy metal music on driving speed, and the alternative, there is a main effect for being a fan of heavy, mu heavy metal music on driving speed. So the nature of null and alternative hypotheses hasn't changed. The null is still saying there's no effect, the alternative is saying, oh yes, there is an effect. Then when you look at the interaction effect hypotheses, this is a situation where you're considering both of your independent variables at the same time and how they interact to predict your dependent variable. So if we start at the top here, there's two different ways you could kind of write this. Um, I prefer the second one, but the one on the top is perfectly fine. So the null would be that there is no interaction effect of both your IVs, right, heavy metal music, and being a fan of heavy metal music on your dependent variable of driving speed. And of course, the alternative is pretty much the same thing, except saying, yes, there is an interaction effect of these two independent variables, heavy metal music and being a fan on driving speed. Another way you could state this is the impact of heavy metal music on driving speed does not depend on being a fan of heavy metal music for your null. The alternative would be the impact of heavy metal music on driving speed does depend on being a fan of heavy metal music. So typically when a researcher is doing a factorial ANOVA, they have an alternative hypothesis, an expectation about the two independent variables interacting together. So just on, based on my life and what I've seen, maybe I would expect that people who listen to heavy metal music in the car, who like heavy metal music, are going to drive really fast. They're into it. The, dr the kick drum's going. They're going really fast. But maybe the people who don't like heavy metal music and they have to listen to heavy metal music in the car are going to be annoyed or distracted and be driving slower instead of faster. So you see how the effect of heavy metal music depends on being a fan. If you're a fan, it's going to make you drive faster. If you're not a fan, maybe it's going to actually make you drive slower than if you had no music at all and you weren't distracted. So let's look at some sample data and make some interpretations about what that looks like. So the first thing that I want to point out is that instead of having, you know, before where I showed you, you know, these would be the mean speeds for each group, now you actually have some numbers to work with. So if we kind of break this down, we could see that those fans who listen to heavy metal music had an average speed of 85 miles per hour. The non-fans that were listening to heavy metal music had an average speed of 65 miles an hour. Then if we go to the other condition, the no music condition, the fans who had no music, average speed of 65 miles per hour. The non-fans who had no music, average speed of 70 miles per hour. Now, when it comes to main effects, I strongly suggest that you focus on these mean of means. So let's take a look at what those indicate. So these mean of means are only considering one independent variable at a time. So if we look at this 75, this 75 represents the mean speed for heavy metal fans regardless of which condition that they were in. So again, 
The 75 on the right represents the mean speed of heavy metal fans, regardless of what kind of music they were listening to. You just kind of collapse across those two. Now, the way I got that 75 was I took the 85 plus the 65, divided it by 2, and I got that 75. Now, right below that 75, you see that 67.5. That is the mean speed for non-heavy metal fans, regardless of the kind of music they were listening to when they were driving. Then we go down to the bottom. So that 75 at the bottom left represents the mean speed of people who were listening to heavy metal music, regardless of whether or not they were a fan. And then the 67.5 at the bottom represents the mean speed of people listening to no music, regardless of whether or not they were a heavy metal fan. So you see the 75 and 67.5 along the bottom are examining the main effects or the differences based on type of music. Then that 75 and 67.5 along the right side are looking at the main effect of being a fan without considering the type of music. So that's really where you want to go to interpret main effects, looking at the impact of one independent variable at a time on your dependent variable. So if I look at this, and there's really no you know, hard and fast rule because I'm not going to actually have you do significance testing. We're not going to know what the standard error really is. You just kind of have to eyeball it. And because um, I'm going to try to keep it simple for you guys, I'm going to try to make these numbers pretty obvious in all the examples and all the um, assignments that I give you around the factorial ANOVA. So if you look at the mean of means on the right there, they're pretty far apart, right? There's a pretty big difference. 75 is much larger than 67.5. Usually if there's more than like a two point difference, you would say, yeah, there's probably an effect going on. So if we look at this, the fans of heavy metal are going faster than the non-fans, regardless of what kind of music they're listening to. So you would say there is a main effect for being a fan of heavy metal and that fans of heavy metal drive faster than non-fans. Then if you look along the bottom, those mean of means, you see a similar, actually the exact same numbers. And then you see those who listened to heavy metal drove faster than those who had no music. So in this example, there are two main effects. There's an effect for both independent variables, being a fan of heavy metal and which kind of music you were listening to. Then if you get to the interaction effect, there's two ways that you can think about interpreting that. So one is you could say, all right, you kind of want to look for a flipped pattern. So if you look at the numbers, you see that in the heavy metal condition, the fans drove faster, or sorry, um, among fans of heavy metal, they drove faster with heavy metal and slower with no music. But you see the flipped effect down here. So among non-fans, they actually drove slower with heavy metal music and faster with no music. So that shows you that the effect of music depends on whether or not you're a fan of that music. If you go down to the graph, it makes it much easier. You can just really see if you look at the bars, right? So let's kind of dissect this a little bit. So the red bars represent the heavy metal music condition. The yellow bars represent the no music condition. And then each grouping represents the being a fan or not a fan. So if you look at the left here, among non-fans, you see that the red bar is higher and the yellow bar is shorter, or the gold bar is shorter, right? So that just gets at the fact that, and these are based on these means within the table, that if you're a fan, heavy metal music makes you drive faster. But then if you look at the non-fan side of the graph, you see that the gold bar is higher and the red bar is shorter, right? So it flips. So red is higher here, red is shorter here. And that just gets at the fact that among non-fans, listening to no music makes them drive faster than listening to heavy metal music. So another way to detect an interaction effect is if you draw a line from, you know, the same colored bar to the same colored bar on the other side, and then do the same thing for the other colored bar, you see a little cross, right? Little interaction effect there. So it goes crossways. So that's another way that you can tell. Or you could just say on one side, this colored bar is taller. On the other side, it's shorter. Now, if we look at this example data, so here, 
we can see that among heavy metal fans who listen to heavy metal music, they were going 88 miles per hour. Among heavy metal fans listening to no music, they were going 70 miles per hour. Among non-fans listening to heavy metal, they were going 78. And among non-fans listening to no music, they went 79. Now, if we look at the mean of means to try to figure out the main effects, we can see that the mean of means on the right there for being a fan of heavy metal music are very, very close together. So I would make the judgment that there's actually no main effect for being a fan of heavy metal music. But if you look at the mean of means along the bottom, you see that 83 is much larger than the 74.5. So I would identify, yes, there is a main effect for music condition in that those who are listening to heavy metal go faster than those who are not. Then when it comes to the interaction, you can either, again, look at the numbers within each condition to see, oh, for those who are fans of heavy metal, we've got 88 versus 70. So a higher number for heavy metal, a lower number for no music. But among those who are not fans, you actually see a smaller number in the heavy metal condition and a larger number in the no music condition. You can also look at the graph and see that for fans, the red bar is taller, right? Heavy metal fans are driving faster. But for the non-fans, the red bar is actually shorter because the non-fans are actually driving slower when they're listening to heavy metal music. And again, look at my funky, sad little design here with my, my lines. But you can see that if you draw a line connecting the two bars of the same color, that you get a cross over. You get an interaction effect. Now, finally, here's a situation where if you look at our mean of means for being a fan of heavy metal, we have very different mean of means, right? So you can see there is a main effect based on being a fan of heavy metal because the 80 is much larger than the 65.5. So not only is there a main effect, but you want to describe that effect in saying that those who are fans of heavy metal drive faster than non-fans. Now, if you look at the mean of means along the bottom, you can see they're very similar. So the music condition really doesn't have an impact. There's no main effect for the type of music. And then if you look at the numbers within the table, you can see that, well, 80 and 80, for those who are fans of heavy metal music, not really any difference there. And then along the bottom, for the non-fans, 65 and 66 are very close as well. Also, if you look at the graph, the red bar is taller for fans. The red bar is also taller than the gold bar for non-fans. And if you draw the lines to connect the bars of the same color, you'll see that there's no crossover. There's no interaction. So that is basically all you need to know about factorial ANOVA to survive in this class. Um, granted, it can get very complex. There is a set of hypothesis tests you do for this. There's a ton of really fun calculations. If you want to read that part of your chapter and dissect into it more, that's totally great. But for the most part, this is all I'm going to expect you to know about factorial ANOVA. I just want to introduce you to it because it is a commonly used tool and it is very, very neat because you can look at the effect of two independent variables at once.